Hallelujah. I am so glad to be back tonight. We've been gone for the last couple of weeks uh, uh, in and out, and uh, it's good to be home. It's glad to, I'm glad to be up here preaching. I told someone to, that you might need to pack your lunch tonight. I haven't preached in two weeks. Amen. No, I actually have shorter notes tonight than I have in a long time. I was surprised that they didn't ask me uh, back in the back when I gave them the scriptures what was going on. But amen. I'm just going to uh, obey the Lord tonight. How many, know, how many says that's a good thing? Amen. To obey the Lord. We're so glad that everyone is here tonight. We want you, uh, if you're new to Faith Church, uh, to take a connection card in the back of your chair and fill that out so that we can connect with you. And then also we have prayer cards in, on the back of those cards that you can take and fill out so that we can be praying over needs that's in your life. Amen. I want to also announce that November the 8th, which is coming up here in just a, a week or so, we're going to be having Casey Van Norman here. That's a Friday night, and that's open to anybody. I know a lot of people have asked, is that just a ladies' event? No, that's open to anybody that would like to come. She's launching her new book called Nothing Wasted. I had the opportunity to uh, read that book over the weekend, and what a powerful book it is, talking about God takes anything that's going on in your life, and he uses it for his glory. How many say amen to that? And so she's going to be speaking that night and introducing that book. And so we want you to come and be a part of that. And that is on a Friday night, November the, the 8th. So uh, we're going to get into the Word of God tonight. I preached this uh, message or uh, the title of this series uh, a couple of weeks ago on the Wednesday night. The last time I spoke on a Wednesday night. And we're going to continue this series over prayer and praying. How many knows that prayer and praying is so important? That we, that we communicate with God, that we talk with God. And when we, when we talk about this uh, subject of prayer, it, it brings us closer into relationship with God. And, it, and, and I want to talk about a subject tonight just for a moment. I won't spend a whole lot of time on it, but talking about how that prayer brings joy into your life. How many knows that we need some joy in our lives? And there's something difference between joy and happiness. How many knows there's a little bit of difference between joy and happiness? And I'm going to bring that out in just a moment. But uh, we, God is wanting to invite us into a meaningful relationship with Him uh, through His Son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said it in Matthew, the sixth chapter, that we ought to go into our closets, close the door, and pray. How many knows it's important that we do this as followers of Jesus Christ, that we become people of prayer? And I believe that God had laid this on my heart uh, several months ago about uh, speaking this to the church to really bring people into this place that we're spending time with God. How many knows that spending time with God is so important to our relationship with Him? I don't know about you, but I, I, I go sometimes. I'm just going to be uh, very transparent with you tonight. There are times and days that I don't spend time with God like I should, that I don't speak to God like I should, or I spend time in prayer uh, with God like I should. And can I tell you, it shows up. I see it. I see it in my life. I see it in my relationship with Him. And not only do I see it in my relationship with Him, I see it in my relationship with others. Because when I am out of, uh, of, of whack, if I can say it that way, with God, if I'm out of kelter with God in my life, how many knows that it, it, it falls into every area of our life? We begin to uh, have issues in every area of our relationship. So I want to turn to some scripture in the book of John, the 15th chapter. Now, as I begin to study this uh, out, this scripture, uh, really, when, many, many times when you think about this, you don't connect this with prayer. You're, you're thinking about something else. And so, as I begin to study this, I was like, man, that is a powerful scripture that really goes and really talks about what prayer is. And so, uh, in John, the 15th chapter, verses 1, I'm going to read the first 11 verses. And I want you tonight, as we're reading this scripture, if something jumps out to you, if you have a uh, an iPad or a phone or whatever, just highlight that. Or if you uh, still uh, are a little old school, underline that, yes, or or put it on on, on paper paper there so that you can uh, catch what Jesus is saying here, what the Word of God is saying here uh, in, in John the 15th chapter. He said this, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Everybody say, more fruit. How many knows that God wants us to bear more? He wants us to do more than we ever have done in our lives. And in verse 3, he said, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. And neither can you unless you abide in me. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Uh, If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you desire. One version says you can ask what you will, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. And then in verse 10, he says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. How many, how many say amen to that? If you keep my commandments, if you're my disciple, you'll, uh, you'll follow me, is what he was saying in this. And he said, uh, uh, Just as I have kept have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things have I spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Somebody say amen tonight. That's the word of God. Jesus is writing this. If you'll go and look uh, in, in the writings of this, this is in red. This was uh, a scripture that Jesus was speaking to his disciples saying, hey, this is the key to knowing who I am. This is the key to unlocking miracles in your life. How many needs a miracle in your life? Amen. Needing God to do something in your life that you cannot do in yourself. He said this scripture here, you can do nothing without me. You can do nothing with that. How many knows that we've got to have God in our life? If we're going to see the supernatural, amen, take place in our life, we've got to learn how to pray and how to pray according to the Word of God. He'll take the things that are natural in our lives and He'll make them super when we can learn how to get along in prayer with God and get along with Him in prayer and begin to focus on that relationship with Him. And so I want to cover some thoughts here tonight, if I can, for just a few moments. How many knows that God is wanting more than just a surface relationship with me and you. Just a, 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 just a casual relationship. He wants us to go deeper. He said, I want you to bear much fruit. I want you to bear more fruit. It's, it's more than just a surface relationship. And I want to say something else with that. It's more than just a one-time prayer at an altar. It's more than coming and just kneeling in prayer. That's the beginning. That's the work of the Holy Spirit that brings us to a place of repentance. And we repent and we ask God for forgiveness and He washes away our sins. But can I tell you, there's so much more involved in a relationship with God than just that one time that we kneel down at an altar and pray. No, He wants you to go home, amen, and have relationship with Him in your homes. I know that's a news flash tonight. Amen. I know that a lot of people, you mean he wants to go to my house? Yes, God wants to go to your house. He wants to have relationship with you uh, every day of the week where you can talk with him. And I want to tell you something, God can talk to you. God can speak. He speaks through his word. A lot of of people say, well, I've never heard God speak. I never have either in in an audible voice. But I have heard God speak through his word. I have had God speak and connect to my spirit, amen, on an intimate level. Understand and know, know what that is. God wants to have that kind of relationship with me and you. More than a surface uh, relationship or a surface level. In this passage, Jesus was talking to his disciples about this relationship with him. One of the the, the things that he was talking about is saying, Hey, I want a deep and meaningful relationship with you. When, When you're walking with him, when you're talking with him, that kind of closeness with Jesus that you can carry on a conversation with him. Many times we... it's We think that prayer is something that's difficult and hard. And the reason why prayer is difficult and hard because sometimes we don't do it enough. When you don't talk to people or someone long enough, how many knows if you've had this acquaintance with someone, uh, you, you may start a conversation with them, but because you don't know them that well, you don't know how to conversate with them. That's the way it is with our relationship with God if we don't spend time with Him. How many's hearing what I'm speaking tonight? Amen. If we don't spend time with Him in prayer, in dialogue, in conversation with God, we'll lose that with Him. And He's saying, I want a deep relationship with you. That will honor. How many knows that God will honor our prayers? And our prayers will become effective when we learn how to communicate with God according to His Word. How many knows it's according to His Word? 
Many times we come and we, the Bible even said it in James, that sometimes we pray amiss, that we pray wrong because we don't know what we're praying because we're not praying the Word. How many knows it's important that we pray the Word of God and speak the Word of God? When we pray the Word of God and speak the Word of God, you can have such a confidence in who you're, uh, that you're talking about and what you're talking about. And so to be effective, listen to what he said in verse 7 and 8. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done done for you. And he said, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that you may be my disciples. He was saying here, if we will abide in him and his word abide in us. How many knows that's an important factor of this scripture right here? I think many times we skip over there and say, he'll give me the desires of my heart. Whatever I ask in in, in prayer, he's going to do it. No, it's when we are abiding in him and his word is abiding in us, then we can ask what our heart's desires and he shall give it to us. There's a difference there. There's a difference than just just coming up in a conversation with God and saying, hey, this is what I want or have some kind of Christmas list that we want to give to God. No, it's when we understand Him and have relationship with Him, we know His heart. And when we get into the Word of God, He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. Amen. It's when we know the Word of God with confidence in our heart that we can ask of God things, amen, in our life. And then He said, this is how I'm glorified. This is how I'm glorified. It's because I can under I can give it to you because I know that you know my heart. And, and that's the way it is with our, our relationships here on earth, even with our own uh, fathers and our mothers. And, if, and you may uh, say, well, I've never had that kind of relationship. Uh, you may not have ever, but I'm telling you, there's a relationship with the mother, mother and the father that they're glorified. They're proud when they can give to their children and give them their desires because you have that relationship. And that's the kind of relationship God wants with us is a relationship that's close, a relationship that's intimate with Him, a relationship that we know each other's hearts, that He knows my heart, and I know His heart, and I know His Word, and His Word is abiding in me, and I can ask what I will, and it shall be done. Not only was Jesus talking about this deep relationship, He was talking about the the vine being connected. How many knows that this vine was connected to the branch? This vine was getting its life source from the very branch. How many knows that our life source, everything that we need in life, is through our Father. Everything, everything, all the nutrients. If you look at this from a natural level, a, a plant that is uh, has a vine, that plant gets all of its nutrients, all of its fluid, all of its water, everything that it needs from the branch. And he was saying, hey, I'm the true vine here and you are the branches. And so we need to look at this and say, hey, I, I, this is where I get my strength. This is where I get the source of my life is through Christ Jesus. Quit trying to find it somewhere else. Quit looking, quit trying to look for, try, quit trying to get another result from somewhere else that God is saying, this is the result that I will give you if you stay connected to the vine. And there's all kinds of connection here that he was talking about. How many knows that there's all kinds of different connections? When we talk about it and think about it, there's Bible study that's a connection with God. How many knows that God wants to connect with us on every level? On every area of our life. When you think about it, uh, church attendance is another way that we can connect with God. When we connect with one another, believers coming together. How many knows that even outside of the church, there's a connection there. That we have a connection with God. But then there's that connection that we're talking about tonight. That is a connection through prayer. That, 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 that private moment that we kneel down in prayer. When we shut the door. When we reveal our hearts to God. And we cry out to God. And we have that, that one-on-one conversation with God. There's nothing like it. I take nothing away from corporate prayer. I take nothing away from people coming together and praying together. I take nothing away for uh, people coming and us praying in the altars, but there is nothing like you going to your home and having a place that you have uh, designated and say, hey, this is my place of prayer. This is the place that I get along with God. This is the place that I go when I need help in my life. This is the place that I go that we have this ongoing conversation with one another. That's what we need, and that's called prayer. That's called conversating with God. And so God is looking for this connection with us, amen, in our lives. Another thing that the Lord desires is that we would have complete joy in our lives. Let me smile at somebody next to you and say, God wants me to have some joy. I heard that my brother preached on this a little bit Sunday. Is that right? 
Yeah, I, I, and, and God had already laid this on our hearts. I think God may be speaking something to somebody that you need to get some joy in your life. How I many knows that's more sometimes than, than happiness on the outside? Joy goes a little bit deeper than that. He's saying, hey, I want your joy to be full. I want you to have a relationship with me, and our joy can be complete in him. That's when we understand that, that our, our joy comes from him in our life. It doesn't come from all these external things in our life. I mean, thanks God for that. Because those things that are external can be here today and gone tomorrow. The things that we put our hope in and, and life in that we say, hey, this is going to bring me joy in my life. Can I tell you, that it may not be here tomorrow. I, I don't know about you, but I like to, to drive a new car. I don't get to do that, but ever so many years, and I don't even try to buy a new car. But, I, but when you get that car that's new to you, it's got that new smell in it that you like. Man, man this smells so good. But kind of knows that new smell goes away. And with that, sometimes our happiness goes away. And the French fry smell starts coming in and, and play on that. But joy, well, he said, I want my joy to remain in you. He meant my love that I have given to you. He said, I want my love to abide in you. And I've, and my, I've kept my Father's commandments. And, and because of that, these things I've spoken to you. He said that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. How many knows that we need God's joy so that our joy will remain full? In our lives. And so joy is more than just an emotion. It's more <clears throat> than having an emotion in our life. How many knows that happiness is an emotion? Joy is something that we can have on the inside of our lives that when everything else in our life is going wrong and bad and it and, and, and feels like the world is crumbling in on us, man, we can have this confidence of joy in Him that, man, everything's going to be all right. Come on. That everything in our life that maybe looking on the outside looks so dim and looks like it's going to fall in on us, but because we know that we're in relationship with God and that we're connected to the vine, we can have this joy that remains in us. Us, no matter what's facing us on the outside. And that's the difference between joy uh, and happiness. Happiness is brought on many times by things that are happening externally, but joy is having a real relationship with God. Joy comes from what is going on on the inside of your life, and that is what happens in your prayer room. That's what's taking place. That's the things that's unseen that we cannot see many times, that God is just filling us up. Amen. As we pray, as we pray, as we communicate with God, God is filling us up with these things in our life, and then when those disappointments in life come, and, and we're basing all of our life on all this other stuff, that doesn't matter that's going to burn away someday I mean knows that those things are going to pass away but his joy will remain because we have a relationship with him life knows how to bring disappointments doesn't it I mean it can it can hit you right in the face with all kinds of stuff but in the midst of that man you can't put on a smile that's real because you know that you know that you know that you're saved that you know that you're in a relationship with something that's beyond this life that's just not temporal, amen, in this life. The second thing that, that I want to talk about is this. When you really learn how to pray and seek God, you, you'll understand that it's more than just hanging out with God, amen. It's more than just having a, a friend that, uh, I mean, has a friend that you like to hang out with that you can be real with, that, that you can just be yourself. How many has a friend like that? Okay, nobody has any friends like that uh, tonight. Okay, we need to talk about that, amen, tonight for just a moment. No, we all have a friend or someone, I hope, that you have someone that you can hang out with, that you can be yourself, that you can be real with. And, and, and when you understand that, that kind of friendship, that's what God is wanting with us, amen. He don't want to just be your hangout buddy, but I'm telling you, God is wanting to have a relationship that you're real with Him. That he is real with you. How many knows that those are the kind of friendships that God is desiring in our lives? That we can just be transparent. I, I think so many times as Christians, we think that we got to have it all together. Come on. That we got to put everything just in right order. But how many knows there's some days that it just ain't that way? That it's just not that way. And God knows that. And that's when we can go into that place of prayer and say, God, here I am. This is what's going on today. I just want to be real with you. And how many knows that we need sometimes even just to come in, into, into life, into places, and just be real with people? Because when we show that we can be real with people, we can show that God can be the glory of everything when His glory is revealed through you, when you can have joy in the midst of all that stuff that's going on. 
in your life. And so we need to learn how that to have this kind of relationship. God desires this element of realness in our life. That we can uh, go to Him in prayer. And He can talk to us. And He can correct us. And we can be at that place where we say, God, I repent of my sins. See, it's hard to repent when you're not real. It's hard to come to a place of repentance when you're not real. Because you want to try to hide it. But can I tell you, you can't hide nothing from God. You can't hide nothing from him. He already knows what's going on. You might as well just, in Oklahoma terms, fess up. Come on. You just need to tell him, say, God, I've messed up. And fess up to him and say, hey, this is what's going on in my life, Lord. I want a real relationship with you. I don't want some fake relationship with you. How many has had fake relationships with friends? You don't have to raise your hand right now. But we've had those maybe that you, that you wasn't real with people, that you had that acquaintance with them, but you wasn't able to be real with them. That's not the relationship that God wants. God wants that relationship that you can be real with Him. Listen to what Revelations 3 and 20 said. He said, look, I stand at the door and I knock. And if you hear my voice and open the door, he said, I will come in and I will share a meal together as friends. Come on. How many knows that that's the relationship that God wants? And he is. He's standing at the door and he's knocking at our heart. I don't know how many times in the midnight hour that I'll hear that knocking at the door that God has said, hey, I want you to get up out of that sleep and come and visit with me and pray with me and seek me. And when we do that, he says, man, it's, it's like us, us sitting down and having a meal together. There's nothing greater than having a meal together. Let me say amen. Yeah, I knew that would lighten some of you up tonight. Amen. There's nothing like it when we can have fellowship with God, and that's what he's wanting with us. I, I said this a few weeks ago, and I'm going to uh, say it again. He wants more than us to be a, a, a relationship that we're looking at God as some kind of vending machine. Amen. God don't want that kind of relationship with us. Uh, the author Larry Crabb wrote this. He said, we prefer a vending machine God to a sovereign personal one. But in reality, no one cuddles up to a vending machine. We insert the proper change. We pull the appropriate lever. We reach our, uh, for our treat and then we enjoy it and we walk away. That's not the kind of relationship that God is wanting. He don't want us just to come and just spill out everything that we need and then we don't have a relationship and we walk away from Him not getting really what we need because how many knows that stuff doesn't satisfy? He wants to have something that will satisfy you in your life. And we don't need to even come to, we don't need to come to God, amen, many times and just give Him a list of things. How many knows that God is wanting us to just come and have relationship with Him? There's sometimes that you need to, <clears throat> excuse me, get into your prayer room and just sometimes be quiet with God. Get in that place where you're talking with God and then all of a sudden you just get quiet with God and God begins to talk with you and He begins to have a relationship with you. There was a quote that I seen too. It said there was a little girl and her mom uh, that she said to the mom, he, she said, did you say your prayers tonight? And the little girl said, well, mom, I didn't need anything. And how many knows that's us many times? That, that many times when we don't need something from God, we don't go to God. But how many knows that we need to break that in, in our lives where we go to God no matter what, that we have that relationship with Him? How many's hearing what I'm preaching tonight? Amen. God is wanting something real with you. Amen. Can I get somebody to come and bring me a water somewhere if you can? This is what two weeks of preaching does to you right here. You lose your voice when you don't preach. Amen. Is that coffee? Praise God. Amen. I'll do coffee too. Amen. Everybody clear your throat with me, okay? Amen. Third, third, the third, thank you. The third thing is this. God is not impressed by our religious activities. Let me say amen to that. He's not impressed by your religious activity. He wants our hearts. Can you imagine just for a moment if you if your best friend ate lunch with you only because they had to? Think about that for a moment. If they only ate lunch with you or sat down with you or visited with you only because they had to. Can I tell you, God is wanting to have more than that kind of relationship that we are, are, are just moving by religious activity that we, because we know that we should do these things, we do them sometimes and, and we're not really doing it from our heart. We're doing it out of a mind consciousness. God wants more than our mind consciousness. God wants your heart tonight. He wants you to enter into prayer and speak to Him from a heart.
heart relationship that's more than a have to type thing. There's nothing worse than having to do something. How many goes uh, kicking and, and, and complaining all the time when you have to go do some things sometimes? Yeah, there's a difference be, between wanting to do something and having to do something. And, and, there, and there, I don't know about you, I don't like to have to do things. I want to do things. And so this is the great thing about our relationship with God is we get to, amen, we get to have time with Him. We get to move into His presence. We get to have a relationship with Him where we're having that one-on-one time with Him. It's not out of pure religious activity. No, it's out of a heart that says, God, I love you with everything that's within me and I want to have this relationship with you. You. Amen. How many knows that prayer is simply a conversation with God? God is wanting to have a conversation with you. Not a monologue. God don't want just us doing all the talking. Amen. He wants to have that relationship with us where it's a dialogue that we're talking back and forth. Amen. Uh, we don't have to make prayer difficult. How many knows that when we, when we talk about prayer, sometimes we make it difficult because we think we may have to say the right words or do the right thing in our prayer. No, I mean, there's been some times I've went into prayer that all I could do is just fall down and cry before God. Can I tell you, He hears cry. He understands cry. Amen. He understands our heart. Amen. And I'm telling you, that's a conversation sometimes with God. God is saying, hey, you you don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have uh, dot all the I's and cross all the T's or know all the right things to say. Hey, he says, just come to me and have a conversation with me. I think that's the biggest thing about prayer many times when I talk to people and they, they say, well, how do I pray? I've never prayed. I said, it's like you having a conversation with me. It's like you speaking with me, talking with God and allowing God to speak to you, amen, into your spirit. That's what God is wanting. And I'm telling you, when we understand this uh, in our lives and having this conversation, how many knows that our joy will be full? This is the the, the neat thing about uh, uh, praying with God and to become a source of joy in our life when we understand that it's a give and receive from God. Amen, we're giving and and God is giving to us and we're receiving from God and God is receiving from us. that's where our joy is complete in God. It's a dialogue conversation, not a monologue in our life. And when we get into his presence, I'm telling you, things will change. Amen. You'll become full of joy. Listen to what Psalm 16 and 11 said. He said, you will show me the path of life. How can we know the path of life if we're not in the presence of God? How can we know the things of God if we don't spend time with God? How can we understand what the knowledge of things is if we don't get into God's Word and have a connection with God and talk about it with Him in prayer? That's what he was saying here in in Psalms, the 16th chapter. And then he goes on and says, In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Can I tell you, there's pleasure, amen. There is joy when we get into His presence, amen. Not not the happiness that maybe uh, it's external, but a joy on the inside that will forever change the way that you look at things, amen, in your life. God is wanting to talk with you. God is wanting to have relationship with you. And my last thought is this, it's more than a religious act of prayer in our lives, amen, of of, of certain things that we quote or certain things that we say, amen. God is wanting a real relationship with us. Even in our culture that we see today, our subculture of Christianity, we can hear people that'll that'll have heartfelt cries. It's a really a, a sincere cry to God, uh, and, and it's an emotional prayer to God. But how many knows that God is saying, I want you to go a little bit deeper than that? I want you to go a little bit deeper than those areas of your life because at any point in our life, amen, we can cry out to God and God will hear our prayer. But how many knows there's something different when we are in relationship with Him, when we're His children and we understand that we have been forgiven and we've repented of our sins. How many knows that 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 kind of prayer is a little bit deeper prayer? And that's what he was saying here in this, in this scripture here. See, God was talking here uh, in this, uh, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will. He's wanting us to be a part of him and him being a part of us. And we see all through the world that we live in today, 
The people are writing about God. They're praying to God. Uh, they're saying the, the right things uh, about to God and they're praying to God. But how knows that God is wanting us to have a conversation with Him in prayer that we can have a, 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 a one-on-one relationship with Him that's beyond some kind of religious thing that we should do. And I want to bring this out tonight in Acts the 17th there where Paul was writing here in the Scripture and he was talking about that in the inside of us, every one of us has this yearning to want to talk to God, but when we have a relationship with God, amen, through uh, accepting His Son into our life, how many knows that prayer can become more meaningful? It can become more powerful in our lives. And listen to what he said in Acts 17, 22. He says, so Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follow. He said, men of Athens, I notice that you are very religious in every way. For I was walking along and I saw your many shrines and one of your altars had the inscription on it to the unknown God. This God whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. He is the God who made the world and everything that is in it. Since He is Lord of heaven and earth, He doesn't live in man-made temples. And human hands can't serve His needs, for He has no needs. He Himself gives life and breath to everything, and He satisfies His every need. From one man, He created all the creation throughout the whole world. And earth, and he decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. I love the way that the writer here in the translation says this in that. How many knows that God is not very far from us at any point or any time? For in him we live and we move and we exist. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen with gold or silver or stone. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in early times. But now he commands everyone, everywhere, to repent of their sins and turn to him. Can I tell you that Paul was saying something in the scripture. He was saying, hey, it's more than a head religion. Amen. It's more than just having a knowledge of who God is or something unknown God or even building idols and saying hey I'm worshiping this no God is saying I want a real relationship with you and that relationship comes through repentance amen everybody look at somebody or say hey it's about repentance in our lives Amen. I know that you become saved and you made a relationship with God through that but how many knows that sometimes every once in a while we got to repent amen to some things we got to get some things under the blood. we got to take and, and, and say, hey, I failed in these areas of my life. And that's what Paul was saying here. Hey, it's more than just coming and, 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 and trying to build some kind of shrine or something like that. No, it's about us having a real walk with God in prayer, talking to Him, walking with Him every day that we can. I love the way that James said it in the fifth chapter of verse 13. He said, is any among you that's suffering... He said, let him pray. He said, is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. How many knows there's power in prayer? Amen. And he said, and if he committed sins, he will be forgiven. He said, confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. Uh, James here was saying, hey, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man Righteous man avails much. How many say amen to that? When we're in right standing with God, when we're uh, repenting and having a heart of repentance in our life, I'm telling you, God hears our prayers. Amen. How many knows that our sins will block our prayers sometimes? Amen. Our sins will block our prayers, and that's sometimes we get in that place where God is going to hear that prayer. God's going to hear those things, but I'm telling you, it's more powerful when we're walking in relationship with Him and knowing who He is and repenting of our sins and saying, God, I've got to get this stuff out of the way so I can have a direct line with you in my life. Amen. That's the kind of relationship that God is wanting to have in our life. Amen. And I'm telling you tonight, if you're in this place, 
and you're in this room for our musicians will come up tonight. If you're here tonight, you don't have that personal relationship with him or there's some things in your life that needs to be repented of. Can I tell you tonight, be real with God. Be real with him. There may be some things that you, you kept sweeping under, sweeping under the carpet and say, well, I'll deal with that later. I'll get to that later. No, can I tell you, get with it now. Get with it in your heart. Get with it in your life and say, God, forgive me of those sins. Forgive me of those things that's in my life. I don't want nothing hindering my prayer. I don't want anything hindering my relationship with God and what God is wanting to have in my life. Amen. And I encourage you tonight. God to move into a closer relationship with Him in prayer. I know that many of you have, have already have a great prayer life. I know that many, many of you seek God and pray to God all the time. But can I encourage you tonight, amen, keep getting in, in a stronger relationship with Him. Keep moving deeper. How many knows that God is always calling us deeper in relationship with Him? Yes, God is always calling us into a place that, hey, that we can be real with Him, that we can be earnest with Him. And when we're doing this, I'm telling you, God, amen, will begin to move in areas of our life that we thought we could never see. There's miracles in some lives tonight that needs to take place. And you need to seek God. You need to say, God, go, go to Him. Don't go to everything else. How many knows that sometimes we want to run to everything else first? Amen. And try to fix this or fix that. No, God is saying, won't you run to me? Come on, won't you have a relationship with me? Can you?